Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Welcome to our discussion. Um, so the other day I was listening to this podcast. Um, this podcast is Unchained Podcast. Can you see it on the screen? Yeah, I see that. Yeah, so I think Laura Shin, she says she's like a, one of the first journalists uh, to look into crypto. And she's invited Kobe, who's there. He's like an OG in the space, as well as Chris Berniski. Um, he's set up this um, venture capital firm, placeholder. Um, and I found their discussion very kind of, uh, very genuine. Um, so it was very interesting to listen to. So um, um, I'll share that with you. Um, you can have a listen to it. And what it got me thinking is, um, Kobe mentioned a point that this bear market showed that it doesn't um, even the smart so-called smart people uh, made mistakes with FTX um, as well as Alameda um, so this was just just interesting that all these uh, venture capital firms they 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 just got greedy in, in one sense they didn't do their due diligence um, so that's one thought I had the other interesting thing is what bear markets do is you have projects, sometimes they come out into the market and the prices are very, very high. And what happens with bear markets is that the prices go down. So on some of the projects, what happens is these projects come down to either the prices of what um, venture capitalists get, potentially VCs. Um, so I thought what would be interesting is to see what placeholder are doing. Um, so let's see if we can follow the so-called smart money. Um, so let's see placeholder. Well, is that a VC placeholder? Yeah, so placeholder is a VC. So this uh, VC is, so Chris Birnuski, let me do Chris, here we are. So this is Chris Bern, uh, Berniski. I hope uh, I've got his name right, so pronouncing his name right. So the, you can see this is his venture VC firm, placeholder. And so from here, let's go to his website, his VC website. And who is he? He's got a bit more information here. So he's uh, supporting the public infrastructure of tomorrow, co author crypto assets, formerly led crypto at ARK Invest. So ARK Invest is a big company that does investing. So, um, and he, he did is that ARK Invest, that lady that does it. Yes, um, yes. Um, mm -hmm. What's her name? Kathy Wood or something, unless I'm mistaken. Yes, yeah. Kathy Wood. Yeah, Kathy she, she's Wood. the late main lady. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, Kathy Wood. Oh, there yeah. he is. Yeah, so he was their uh, crypto person at um, at Ark Invest. He led their crypto. So let's look at their um, their um, uh, interests. And what would be interesting is to kind of see if uh, any of these projects are halal and if they are kind of uh, worthy of investing. So let's go to Agaric. I've not heard of that. So let's just look at what Agaric is. So build fast, earn fast, a proof of stake chain utilizing hardened JavaScript smart contracts to rapidly build and deploy DeFi. So this looks interesting. Uh, rapidly build and deploy DeFi. So DeFi, you know, depends what you're doing on DeFi for it to be Haram. Obviously, lending makes it haram. Uh, composable library, JavaScript first, secure architecture. There's nothing here telling us anything specific that it's haram so far. Why you'll earn faster. Market services, easy access to liquidity and DeFi services, including treasury vault governance and the automated market maker. So clearly, you need to look into this a bit more. What kind of... Um, liquidity and DeFi services are they doing specifically um cross chain asset bring assets from the cosmos and ethereum networks directly to your project resource management agoric components help keep your focus on building your application not on complex protocol integrations and third party code so this this it looks okay obviously the um, DeFi aspect need to look into more roadmap uh, QT, security audit. Um, these are the things they've done. Q1, they're going backwards there. So that's, um, oh, I'm uh, 2021, sorry. So we're not going backwards. So day-to-day -day security audit, 
They completed a token distribution, mainnet protocol, Q3 mainnet platform preview release, Q4 mainnet inter protocol launch. So mainnet two is coming up, permission smart contracts. Mainnet three permissionless smart contracts is going to come out. So things are going to be well, this coming. This is quite a, really new, a new project then. Yeah, it looks like, like it's new. new. Yeah, because things are coming out still. Mainnet 2, Mainnet 3. How your assets are mm. protected for developers, market participants. So this gives you an idea. Our industry leading backers. So you've got Polychain, Outlier. You know, um, earlier on we were talking about uh, the Outlier Ventures. So this is the one. Polychain is, is one of the um, uh, long-time uh, people expert. behind it. Um, what I think one of the founders of Polychain, he was one of the first employees at Coinbase. Um, I've forgotten his name now, but um, we we'll look okay. at that. So this is, is the good. Polychain to do with Polygon. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> so it's not got uh, anything to do with Polygon. It, it was just uh, from what I recall uh, when they were doing when he went from Coinbase to set up a VC. He was like at the time I think like early days there were very few. Um, uh coins or protocols and so they they took like an advanced um approach of you know what the world will be multi-chain or polychain many chains so hence the name polychain mm, capital that's quite, that's quite um weird back a red beard ventures <laughs> red beard ventures where that's is that, that right at the bottom red beard. the last row yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that one. I've not come across these guys. Nothing to see here. All right. Interesting. Um, so but yeah, poly Polychain is definitely good. Outliers is all right. So the few, there's a few good um, uh, VCs there. Unless they've got them from before and then they went bust like three arrows capital. And the other ones. <laughs> could be, could be. You never know. Something to look into. Let me see if there's anything on CoinGecko and Agoric. Let's see if it's come out. Agoric BLD, so that it has come out. So let's look at this. So let's look at the data. So it's come out in September. So this is interesting. Um, so this is, is interesting. It what, just September of last year. Yeah, September so twenty twenty two. So it's come out during the bear market. Yeah, exactly. It's come out in the bear market. So this is good. Let's look at so the token. One of the ones to watch, like to see which ones actually come out in the bear market. Because during the bear market, most of these crypto coins, they collapse um, along with all the, the funders. So obviously, last year we saw Terra Luna, FTX, BlockFi, Celsius, Voyager, quite a few big VCs um, that have gone down. That's probably one of the reasons why we think we probably hit the bottom because those venture capitalists, they all gone bust and they took down many of the assets, especially like FTX and Alameda. They were funding Solana because Solana's all time high has gone from like hundreds of dollars to like ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, over two hundred. I can't remember what it was exactly. Let me um quickly look at Solana, uh, two fifty or something at one point. Something around that. Yeah, you can see over two fifty. Um, but with Solana is another thing. I don't. I think Solana's got some future. You know, a lot of people think otherwise. But I, uh, uh, that discussion for another time. Let's uh, stick to Agoric, yeah, uh, and the nice. prices. So um, yeah. So it came out last in September, a few months ago. S maximum supply is infinite so that's a red flag <laughs> if anything is infinite <laughs> then obviously you don't, yeah you don't it's not going to really increase in prices yeah there might be infinite. temporary things so here even if you look at circulating supply at the moment uh, it's got a uh, total supply one um, billion the current um, circulating supply is 300 million um so that's interesting. Uh, current market cap is 102 million. That's quite high. And a 210 rank. So that's interesting. Um, what else? Let's look at market cap. So you can see it kind of came out 100 million market cap, 150. So kind of 
maybe over the next few weeks when uh, there's like a um, a mini crash, there might be a good opportunity to buy, for example, if you wanted to. Uh, it's it, difficult to get to because it's on osmosis. Hubi is all right. And Crescent, uh, I'm not sure what Crescent is, but um, on, it, a lot of exchanges. Yeah, this is a good I sign. For the, yeah, for the average user, they just got Crypto.com or Coinbase or Kraken or one of those ones. Um, those other smaller exchanges, probably not too familiar with them. And obviously, yeah. with these new coins, um, the, it's good to be early in these small exchanges because once they listed in the other ones the price increases usually exactly exactly so this is it um so obviously if you when we research this if this looks good then uh you can take a shot out buying it um so what else uh, do i look at so what about the uh, telegram and twitter how many followers do they have and what activities there are yeah, let's look oh, at they've it. got a linkedin so... as well that'd be interesting yeah, so on Twitter, they've got 39,000 followers. That's not many. Uh, Telegram, there's about 800, 8,000. Oh, it won't be many because they're fairly new. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's 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 the thing. So uh, what else does this fall under? Um, let me go back. What is this project? Because then you can do a comparison of other things. A proof-of-stake chain utilizing hardened JavaScript. So proof of stake. So it would be good to compare it to other proof of stake uh, projects like this. I think uh, the main thing is the JavaScript thing. Well, yeah, I haven't really yeah, seen yeah. other ones. Yeah, That's probably so Java... the niche thing that they're trying to do. Yeah, JavaScript, uh, a lot of, well, uh, you assume a lot of people relatively will know javascript so some programmers are more familiar with it as opposed to like a new programming language altogether so yeah that's what the you um, can go on their linkedin i'd like to see like yeah. who's like behind it if there's actual faces that we can reference and see or if it's just a general thing so they're based in california yeah Based in California. What else? So what else? Um, so when you look for these projects, you look at the employees. There you have some names. Not sure if you recognize any of these. No, not really. Yeah. What else? Um, so people. The other thing is, this is the point. Like, um, usually you do due diligence, and if you've got good vc is backing it so clearly placeholder is based on this conversation they would have done some due diligence as well um mm. so let's assume it, the due diligence is okay-ish um you'd look at backers so these vcs other partnerships they're building we had a brief look at um um we had a brief look at their roadmap um white paper back in the day you know white paper was a big thing nowadays white paper is not as big as it used to be um so that's another thing the last thing i would look at for now just um well actually two things that come to my mind one is like how many developers are on the project so that would be interesting because developers give a give an idea of what's happening on the network but since this is a relatively new project um obviously they're building you would assume that the last how do you thing check that? how do you check the developers that's a good question so there is a there are websites that you go on to i've forgotten um what the website is called um github github is one place where you can go and check. And they have a github on the coin gecko sometimes they have it yeah let's look at uh, developer there we are no developer repo at the moment so that's that's not missing there so looking for that uh um, they have the economics it Sorry? says uh, tokenomic. It says new, just above yeah. widget. Um, yeah. So this is um. This oh, it's not, not available. So we got circulating supply, total supply. That's the tokenomics. Um, market cap. What else was I going to say? Um, 
the risk yeah risk so in terms of risk about investing it it's always good to compare it with the blue chips so uh if you, simple one to compare it to is bitcoin so if you look at bitcoin so what's happened here so back in the day um bitcoin's price has gone to 64000 65000 and it's now at uh 16000 so in terms of your risk to reward let's just uh, get a calculator out um so you are doing 64000 65000 rather not being exact but divided by your current price is say 17000 17000 so you're getting a uh, 380% return. Um, so the profit would be 280% return. So that's one thing. So if you're comparing it to Bitcoin, which is safe, obviously you, you expect the return to be less because it's more um, a less risky asset. If we compare it to ETH now, for example, and this is what my kind of comparison would be, ETH went all the way up to roughly... Uh, 4,600 roughly, let's say. So 4,600 uh, divided by, and currently it's about 1,263. 263. So again, that's two, uh, 364% return. In other words, 264% profit. So that's what you're ex ex expecting. Now, ETH, I wouldn't buy at these prices. I would kind of buy it around, say, $1,000 at least. Some people, there's predictions that it could go to 700 But let's take 1000 for easy maths. It's it's um, If you buy at 1000 ETH sh should get to around $5,000, say. So you're making 400% profit there. Now, the question is, will Agoric give you that kind of returns? And so if it's not giving you 400%, then you shouldn't really touch it because the risk to reward Ethereum is a much safer investment. So what Agoric should be doing is it should be giving you a much bigger return. So you sh it should be either double that of Ethereum or something like that. So if, if ETH is giving you 400%, you're looking at 800% uh, at least or 10x minimum. So... If the market cap currently is 102 million, the question is, can it go to 1 billion, 10x? That would give you 900% profit. Um, so that is the thing. So if it's going to give you those kind of returns, then this is something you invest in. Otherwise, this is something that you kind of, you know, you, 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 uh, you just decide, you know what, I'm happy to miss out on this one if I miss it. So that's the thing I would say on this project. Uh, does that make sense in terms of the risk reward and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I in think... terms of the 10x and stuff, because this is relatively unknown, isn't it? Um, like, what does it take for a project like this, like relatively unknown to be known, and like for the number of followers and everything like that to increase? Yeah. And essentially, so... in this venture. Sometimes it's the venture capitalists, isn't it, that they fund and pump the prices up. Yeah, exactly. So this is what happened with um, with a lot of the Alameda FTX projects. Um, but what you're looking is that they uh, within the industry product mar product market fit. Um, it fits a niche, so something where people realize this is something to do. So here, you've got a proof of stake chain so the question is is a proof of stake chain going to uh, uh, take, uh, build, uh, take some momentum is it going to build something um, you know what I, 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 I'm not feeling it at the moment you know there's so many chains out there why is this any different proof yeah. of stake you know so for me it's not really something I would I would go uh, invest in personally um <laughs> But yeah, I don't, um, so from, um, but proof of stake, I mean, the chains, general proof of work things, 
taking up energy. So you've got that environment argument in terms of, you know, what proof of stake saves energy, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one element. The JavaScript themes. So if developers like it, you know, you never know something may happen. But for me, I think it's not something that um, looks that interesting. But yeah, I think on initial initial thing, initial look at it, but something to look at in detail. So yeah, maybe we should explore this in detail later on, see what happens. But yeah, it's mm. interesting coming back to the whole, how did we come across this um, place venture? placeholder rather so um yeah hope uh, hope this was useful